excited about things real fast and real easy. Don't take a whole lot to excite me. I mean, you know, the minute I see something that looks good and something I like, I mean, the table, I get so geared up, all I can talk about is that. All I can do is just, you know, yak about that. I get so excited about things. My father was that way. Well, that is a learned behavior. I got news for you folks. It ain't never going to change. I trust people. I expect what people say to be what they mean. If you show me a picture and tell me this is a picture of thus and so, I believe that's a picture of thus and so. Well, I've been dealing with realtors, trying to find us some land for out in the country, and I had a criteria, a list of criteria a mile long. Had to do with climate, had to do with rainfall, because I want conditions to be ideal if possible, or as ideal as possible for, you know, this land to be used in a number of ways. Agriculturally, uh, possibly at some point raising some animals, you know. I, I do not, listen, I have no visions of creating a heaven on earth like David Koresh. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a recreational facility where, where our church people and we can have events, you know, maybe have a, a weekend camp out, you know, we can do things with young people, we can do things for married couples, kind of do a weekend retreat, you know, maybe even do a singles retreat and what have you, you know, all kinds, of, I've got all kinds of ideas and I've had these ideas for years. So I've been looking for land for years, well, this one broker, this one real estate guy I've been dealing with, he'd come to me, hey, I'll tell you what, I've got the perfect property. It's so many acres, it's got a little pond on it, and he shows me the schematic of where it falls in the mountains of Oklahoma. Beautiful pictures. Almost paradise. I was going to go up there Thursday, but I was too tired after finally finishing my shed enough to put stuff in it. And I, I wanted to clean the garage so when Tommy come home Wednesday from his uh, being out of town for a trip, he could actually park in the garage again instead of it being my workshop, you know. That was my surprise. I wanted to do this. So I worked like a dog. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, man, I worked like a dog. I was so tired Thursday. There was no way in the world I could go out to Oklahoma. Three-hour drive, three-and-a-half-hour drive. Couldn't do it. Friday, I decided, nah, I said, you know what, I'm going to wait till Saturday because I'd love Booby to go with me. I want Booby to be there. After all, this is going to be quite the most wonderful experience there ever was. <laughs> Little did I know it would turn into Bill and Ted's incredible adventure. <laughs> um, We're driving up there, and of course, I'm just a chat. I swear to God, sometimes I want to put tape over my own mouth. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I'm driving, and I'm just talking, and I'm so oh, I'm dreaming about what we can do, and I'm just so oh, my mind is racing, and oh, I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know what. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to get there. Blah, blah, blah. And I get mad at Tommy because he's not sharing my enthusiasm. <laughs> I did. I said, boy, you don't know how to share anybody's enthusiasm, do you? Because I'm just a bubbling, you know, and he's like, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. 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 Got it. <laughs> Drives me crazy, because I'm, I'm a naturally enthusiastic person, you know. <laughs> so I'm getting mad at him because he's not, not sharing my enthusiasm, you know. Boy, I've already put up a, I've already put up a, uh, a windmill for power, I've put up solar, I've built cabins, I've had this delivered, I've had that brought in, you know. Boy, I mean, my dream, we had a, whoo, boy, did we have us a campground up there. My Lord have mercy. Bill, I was already roasting marshmallows, I was already fishing out of the stock pond. I almost brought my kayak with me so I could test the depth of the water. I did, almost did. At the last minute, I told Tommy, I, I, at the last minute, I told him, I'm not going to bring any of this stuff up there today. I'm going to wait until next trip. Thank God. That property.
pretty mad every condition I have. Every condition this property's got. Every condition. It's perfect. There's only one tiny minute glitch. You can't get there. Unless you own a blimp, or you have a helicopter, or one of your hobbies is skydiving, you ain't getting there. Oh, the real estate guy told me, oh, well, you know, the developer went in and put in roads in the forest, you know, through the woods to all these properties, and they have mountain roads. So we recommend a four-wheel drive because, you know, some of the roads are a little steep and like that, you know. We recommend a four-wheel drive, but it's not necessary. It's just recommended. <laughs> My eyeball is recommended. <laughs> oh, brother, if you don't have a four-wheel drive, you are a pot out of luck. Well, now, here comes Mr. Enthusiasm. We drive down, you know, the state highways. We get to the county road. It's gravel. That's all right. Gravel road's all right. We get to the dirt road that leads into the woods. That's okay. I can handle dirt roads. According to the description they gave me it was dirt roads according to the picture they showed me it was a dirt road we drive down that dirt road about a mile all of a sudden all we're seeing are these washed out piles of rocks about as wide as a one lane road literally going down into the woods and I mean Martin about every step you go you're here in the bottom of your car kind of I said, oh dear Jesus, I just know I'm going to tear my muffler off. So what do I do? What any sane person would do. I keep going. We get to a spot, and I mean, all of a sudden, you feel like you're on a roller coaster, because now you got a dip goes down like this. And it's at about a 10 degree angle. <laughs> it's all rocks. There's a little bit of sand mixed in there, but it wasn't wet, it wasn't muddy. Tommy says, you don't want to go down there. I said, I said what do you know? Of course I got to go. The land is up there. How am I going to get to that land if I don't keep going in my 2013 Dodge Minivan? Of course it makes sense. i got front wheel drive. I've got the feature on my truck, on my van, where I can go like a manual transmission, you know. I can actually put it in manual, uh, first gear, second gear, so on and so forth. It has that feature. So I figured, I'm, I'm okay. It's front wheel drive. I'll put it in first gear. I'll just, you know, shimmy on it. And he said, you might get down, but my God, you'll never get back up. Yeah. <laughs> what does he know? That land I want is out there. Now, I can't see that land from here. I've got to get out there. And I'm sure his murder not going to get out and walk. You know, the equivalent of 300 acres. I ain't walking over there. So I go down the first little thing. Well, you know, not so bad. We made it. A little scraping, a little, you know. We go a little bit further. I mean, just rock. Everywhere there's exposed rock. These fools, this so-called road they put in, no drainage. So guess what? The water just washes out the road. It follows the path of least resistance. This road, so-called, they created, it's not a road. It is. <laughs> it's a seasonal stream is what it is. It runs water when it rains, you know, and washes everything out. I mean, I'm talking rocks works, but big rocks, you know. Yeah. And here I am trying to avoid the rock. And then there's big old jagged rocks on the side. I'm trying not to hit in front of my... I'm going to tell you, thank God. Thank God God watches out for drunks and fools. <laughs> <laughs> it is a miracle I didn't total that thing. It is a literal miracle. Because I'm going down. I'm trying to avoid this rock wall. I'm trying to avoid this one. I don't want to blow out my front... Headlight on this one while I'm trying to avoid this one. And I, but I want to see that land, my God. I want to see that land. And as we're driving, Tommy, who is my voice of reason, because when I get something in my head, all reason goes out. He's saying, 
are you sure this would be a good idea? Land, I'm gonna even if we <laughs> even if we follow through on this deal, he said, ain't nobody gonna be able to get back there. He said, John and Bill's truck ain't gonna get there. No. Martin ain't gonna get there. He said, ain't none of us gonna get back there. He said, are you sure this? I said, listen, I come to see that. I drove three and a half hours to see that land. I'm by God, I'm gonna see that land. So I kept right. And there'd be little patches that were halfway decent. And then all of a sudden, you know, halfway level and all. And then all of a sudden, we hit another roller coaster. <laughs> So what do I do? Keep going. I keep going. <laughs> the land's out there that I'm dying to see. Hey, if it's heaven on earth, maybe it'll be worth the rocks. And the, maybe I'll buy a four-wheel drive, and when everybody comes, I'll have them park out and boot dock somewhere. And then I'll drive them in the four-wheel. Seriously, you know, this time my brain works. I'm, you know, I'm an optimist at heart, so... I find a way around every trouble, you know. I've already got us buying army surplus vehicles with tracks on the back, you know. <sighs> you know, troop transports. I got within two lots. Two lots of the land that I was looking for. And I'm telling you, there was a that so-called road, it was pure rock. Just hundreds of rocks sticking out, jagged, jigged every which way, going up like this, then around like this. And I looked at the map I'm looking at. I said to Tommy, he's all we got to do is go up here like this around. And, and then we got to go up, and then we got. He looks at me and says, uh, are you sure this is a good idea? <laughs> Finally, I was overcome with reason. <laughs> I'm still paying on that thing. I've already banged it every which way but upside down. So I said, you know what? I'm going to back up. I'm on, I, I, I. Now let me tell you, that road was narrow. It was just one car wide. And you were lucky if you had a little bit of grass on either side of you. Well, I backed up a bit. I found a little spot. I did a 38-point turn. <laughs> turned myself around. Went back the other, oh, I forgot to tell you, you have to drive through a street. <laughs> that was the fun part. I enjoyed that part. If you look at my van as you leave, you're going to see it look like I went four-wheeling. Okay? So I drive back. And, of course, we go down and we go up and we go around and we go this way and we go that. And we get to this one spot where the road just does this. And guess what? <laughs> I can't get up the hill. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Booby said, you might, not, you might get it down, but you won't get back up. Well, guess what? For the first time in 17 years, he was right. <laughs> I tried, and I tried. And I tried. My tires were smoking. I was afraid I was going to set them on fire. I had my car in its little first gear, you know, the manual part I had in first gear because I figured, you know, low uh, ratio, uh, high torque ratio, you know, I could make it. I, if, I can just, if I can just catch that one rock that's sticking out, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll get where I'm going. And I tried. I'm not kidding. I must have tried 30 times, folks. My baby gets out of the, van, out of the truck, the van. He's throwing rocks and throwing... Uh, wood and all kind of stuff <laughs> in the holes, you know. I'm sure he was tempted a time or two to throw it at me. But if I got hurt, he'd still have to pay for the van, so that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> He's trying to fill in, you know, the low spots where I keep spinning out and stuff, hoping we can grab, you know, get a little bit. It ain't happening. I don't know how long we tried to get out of that mess. Finally, I'm backing up, I'm trying to get a little bit of leverage, you know, get a little bit of room to, to, to get a run going, you know. Well, the soil was not wet, it was not mud, but the, the sand that was mixed in with the stone was just damp enough. 
so that even when I would try to get a running start, all I, my wheels would spin the whole time. Well, you, you can't get any momentum going, you can't get, you know, so I'm going, and I'm trying to go up the hill, you know, it's not going to happen. So again, I back up. I said, well, let me see if I, if I go over this little spot over here, maybe I'll, I'll be able to catch some momentum with my drive tire, my right front tire. Maybe I can catch that little piece of ground over there that's got a little bit of grass, and, you know, maybe that'll help me get enough momentum. Stupid truck went up on a little log, and I was there to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm trying to get out of that spot and the van won't even move. I'm stuck as stuck can be. Oh, dear God, right? I said, Booby, um, uh, this might be a good time to call 911. <laughs> we might need the fire department or somebody to come rescue us. So Tommy calls and they made arrangements to send out a tow truck, you know. And long story short, we sat there, I don't know how long, we, a long time waiting. Uh, poor tow truck, bless his heart, he did, you know, he had to come way out in the boondocks try to find us. <laughs> While I'm sitting in the car, I've got a point to all this, folks. While I'm sitting in the car, I said, you know what, it's time to worship the Lord. Amen. It's time to worship the Lord. I'm not in happy land. I'm not where I'd like to be. Circumstances are so opposite what I would like them to be. But I preach it and I mean it and I say it and I wish people would understand. I get so sick and tired of people telling me what the devil's done to them. If you're a child of God, the devil hadn't got power over you. If you're a child of God, the devil ain't doing nothing to you. He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the authority. He doesn't have the ability. Old Job couldn't be tried without Lucifer standing before God and getting permission. Don't you tell me how the devil's tormenting you. I didn't sit there on that log in the middle of the boondocks at the bottom of a... 8,422 foot incline at 10 degrees. I didn't sit there believing the devil did it. I'm praying, you know, every time I go to try to go up that hill, I'm praying. Well, guess what? All the praying I did, that truck did not go up that hill. Martin, I didn't stop at the bottom of the hill and cuss God and say, well, God, you didn't answer my prayer. But God, I don't know what's wrong with you, Lord. I've been praying. I don't know why you didn't do this for me. Oh, and I know people who do. I said, all right, Lord, I get it. You're trying to tell me something. Gotcha. Message received. I gotcha. I got it. Okay. Apparently, this ain't no head for us. <laughs> Of course, I was still thinking about going and renting a four-wheeler and coming back and seeing if I could find it. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, this ain't for us. It, it, it's not. Because the one criteria that I failed to have on my list was ease of accessibility. That's the one thing. Everything else it had, but it had no accessibility at all. So, anyway, we sat there for quite a while. I put my stereo on my little DVD player. You know that little old lady singing, There's a land of pure delight over there, where our faith shall end inside over there. There no sorrow and no sin will ever enter in. You know? Oh, she's singing for me. I'm feeling the Lord. I'm singing. I'm saying thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You know why? Give me that harp. Hand me my harp. Hand me my harp. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what my circumstance. It doesn't matter what my situation. First of all, the devil didn't do nothing to me. God's in control of my life, not the devil. The devil didn't do... No, my God orders my steps. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Not the devil. Don't sit there, Christian, and blame the devil every time something don't go your way. If it don't go your way, it's because God is trying to tell you that's not the way he wants you to go. Amen. Amen. 
It's that easy. It's that easy. Of course, I wished I'd have figured that out a couple of culverts and a drop or two before I did, but you know. <laughs> but I won't take it. But I had a time listening to that music and singing along and just sitting there in that van. And I looked at Tommy and I said, you know something? When the tow truck finally got there and they were trying to get everything hooked, and boy, the, the man told us, he said, I'll be honest with you, he said, I've taken other people out of here. He said, yeah, the last guy we took out of here, listen to this, had a four-wheel drive truck. <laughs> and he burned out his transmission trying to come up this hill. That's what he told me, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He said, the last guy we had to pull out of here had a four-wheel drive truck. <laughs> and he still burned out his transmission. He said, we had to literally tow him out, not only pull him out with the winch, the winch, uh, the winch, but they also had to tow him out because his transmission was gone, blown. Guess what? He pulled me out of there. We drove home. Don't tell me God ain't good. Mm -hmm. no. Don't tell me God ain't good. I was terrified at what it was going to cost me for this. See, I didn't call AAA because I figured AAA don't handle stupid. <laughs> I, I, said, I said, you know, AAA will get you on the road somewhere, but they ain't going to get you out in the middle of the wilderness, you know, out in the middle of the forest. When you're stuck in, in mud and, you know, I said, no, that ain't what AAA covers. So I called, we, you know, we called the fire department or whatever, 911, they contacted the tow. And they said to Tommy on the phone, said, now, you know he's going to have to charge you for this. Tommy said, yeah, we know. Well, we'll handle it. Thank God for credit cards. He charged us $200. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Wow. I was shocked. I expected it, Martin, to be way more, way more. Yeah. Than at least double that, at least, right? The man said $200. I looked at him. He was a big bearded country boy. I mean, this guy looked like he'd just come off of a television show hunting <laughs> for Sasquatch. <laughs> I mean, overalls, beard, the whole night. He looked the part right down the line, baby. Talk like it, too. Very nice, though. And he had a little partner who was this cute little white boy. Chewing to back his teeth rotten out of his head. I mean, these fellas looked about as Oklahoma country as you're ever going to see in your life, you know. But they were sweet as pie. They were the nicest, nicest men. And they pulled us out and said, well, I'll lead you out in case you get stuck again somewhere. We'll be right in front of you, you know. And they led us out, and I drove that van home. Don't tell me God ain't good. Don't tell me God don't look out for drunks and stupid people, because i got news for you. He does. What a blessing. See, now, now, Johnny, I could look at that whole experience. I could find one lousy thing to get mad at. I got stuck, and I had to wait there for a few hours and all that. But if I look at it, I can see so many blessings in it that it's not even funny. Yeah, we got stuck, but I learned my lesson, and I realized, okay, Lord, maybe this ain't the path you want us to take. For one thing, we'll break our neck even if we try to walk. <laughs> Secondly, we got out of there with the, the nicest people helped us, and it cost me a fraction of what I thought it would cost. My vehicle, basically, I believe, um, until it blows up, is none the worse for wear. It just needs a car wash. I didn't, you know, bang up any rims. I didn't bang up the body. I didn't hurt anything that way. Hey. Why can't I play my harp? Why can't I worship God? You know, the problem with the children of Israel is they didn't realize that while they're in Babylon, God's still God. While they're in Babylon, God is still able to do things for them in that circumstance. They could have been blessed of the Lord in Babylon. Maybe God would make their workload lighter. Maybe God would give them favor with the authorities. Maybe God would uh, allow them to be more prosperous. And maybe the Lord would allow them a better life even during their captivity in Babylon. If only they'd have worshipped Him anyhow. Hallelujah! If only they'd have taken their hearts down from the willow trees and worshipped the Lord and sang the songs of Zion. The Word of God said, God... Literally dwells 
in the praise of his people Israel. We are today part of the spiritual house of Israel. God inhabits the praise of his people. When you worship the Lord, you invite his presence. So they weren't hurting God. They were hurting themselves. Yeah.